fewer flood evacuees in Pahang as weather improves. Once a robber killed in shootout with the police. Good afternoon, you're watching News on 2. I'm Jessica Lee. The improving weather has enabled several flood evacuees in Pahang to return to their homes, leaving 6,575 people at 42 relief centres this morning, down from 7,560 last night. Now, the InfoBanju portal of the Social Welfare Department reported that the remaining evacuees were from eight districts, with Kuantan having the highest number of 4,954 people housed at 22 centres. Pakan District has 1,200 78 people at seven centres. Burra District had 138 people at five centres, namely SK Kuala Triang, SK Charuk Puting, Kampong Mengakara Mosque, Kuala Burra Mosque and Kampong Seberang Guai Community Hall. Maran District had 93 people at three centres, namely Kampong Baru Pertanian Community Hall, SK Pesagi and SM Tengku Ampuan Afzan. Meanwhile, Pahang Education Department Director Dr. Tajuddin Yusuf said 27 schools in six districts were being used as relief centres, 17 of which were in Kuantan, 5 in Pekan, 2 in Termelo and 1 each in Jurantut, Burra and Maran. Meanwhile, in Trungano, the number of evacuees remained at 2,338 from 564 homes this morning. Trungano Civil Defence Force Director Lieutenant Colonel Che Adam Abdurrahman said the relief centre opened at SK Bukit Mentok currently houses the most victims with 843 people from 189 victims. Meanwhile, the number of victims placed at Kamama Municipal Council Berlian Hall rose to 299 from 83 families, while 504 people from 126 homes were moved to SK Sri Iman. Police have shot dead a man believed to be linked to the Lightning Gang, responsible for the recent swift jewellery robberies in Kuala Lumpur and Suramban. The 22-year-old suspect was shot during a crossfire with the police in Taman Konot in Cheras, Kuala Lumpur at around 10.30pm last night. A team from the Bukit Aman Special Task Force on Organised Crime, or STEFOC, who had acted on a tip-off, found the suspect driving suspiciously around the area in a Perdua Maivi. When asked to stop his vehicle for inspection, the suspect fired a shot at the police. This caused an exchange of fire which led to the suspect's death. The police later found a gun in the suspect's vehicle. Investigations revealed that the suspect, who was from Bandabaru Salakting Yisapang, had numerous previous criminal records, including for discharging a firearm under Section three of the Firearms Increased Penalty Act 1971 and was wanted by the police. A taxi driver was arrested for suspected involvement in two heists on a 24-hour convenience store in Pulau Pinang. The 35-year-old man who works in Kuala Lumpur was arrested at house at, the, at his house in Kampong Nagalilit Kedah less than 24 hours after he robbed a 7-Eleven store in Jalan Bagan Lua, Butterworth, yesterday. Pulau Pinang Criminal Investigation Department Chief SAC Datuk Zainul Abu Sama said the suspect had a loaded Smith & Wesson gun on him when he was arrested during the operation dubbed Ops Tuto. Fourteen more bullets were later found in his taxi. Suspect uh, adalah seorang uh, lelaki Melayu yang bekerja sebagai pemandu taksi di Kuala Lumpur. Jadi dia balik ke sini Kemudian dia melakukan samun di kedai 7-Eleven. Setelah dia dapat hasil samun, dia akan balik semula ke Kuala Lumpur untuk bekerja sebagai pemandu teksi. The case is being investigated under Section 392397 of the Penal Code, Section 8 of the Firearms Increased Penalties Act 1971 and Section 8, Subsection A, the Arms Act 1960. The Immigration Department has crippled the syndicate supplying forged documents to foreign workers since 2008. Now, two Bangladeshi men believed to be the mastermind of the syndicate were also detained during a raid on a house in Pandan Indah, Ampang on Thursday. 
Immigration Director General Datuk Sri Mustafa Ali in confirming the matter said the operation was conducted by the Department's Operations, Investigations and Prosecution Division following public tip-off. He added that the syndicate's modus operandi was to offer services for new application and extension of Visit Pass Temporary Employment or PLKS to employers who dealt with them, charging them a certain rate. The syndicate had also managed passports for Bangladeshis and their entry via Rat Hall to obtain PLKS using fake foreign embassy stamps. Dia telah berada di Malaysia sejak tahun 2008. Orang yang namakan Dr. Yang Harun ini. So kalau 2008 berpada bermula dengan tindakan dia iaitu bekerja di Malaysia. Selepas bekerja di Malaysia, dia mencari satu ruang iaitu oh nak mengajak lagi rakan-rakan daripada negara mereka dan selepas itu menciptakan pula bagaimana pemasuan dokumen boleh dilakukan. 258 Bangladeshi passports, 2 Indonesian passports, 26 enforcement cards, 11 fake rubber stamps of foreign embassies and a computer were also seized during the operation. A woman and her son were burned to death in a fire at their house in Tanom Sabah early today. According to the Sabah Fire and Rescue Department, the bodies of 46-year-old Wong Siu Mei and her son Wong Ka Sing 8 were found in a room on the upper floor of the house. They were reported to have been trapped in the house by the grills. Meanwhile, Siu Mei's husband, Wong Vun Chung, 38, suffered 27% burns on his body. The department said it was summoned at 2.35 a.m. and rushed six firefighters in two trucks from the Tenom Fire and Rescue Station to the house. The fire was brought under control at 3.10 a.m. and the operation was completed at 5.15 a.m. The cause of the fire and estimated damage had yet to be ascertained. Federal government's debt not at critical level. Full story ahead. The Malaysian ringgit strengthened yesterday to its highest level against the US dollar since August 2016, boosted by higher oil prices. The ringgit advanced about 0.2% percent to 3.998 to the dollar, breaking the psychologically significant four level. Jadi maknanya bila berlaku correction measure seperti ini, maka uh, pengukuhannya ringgit akan tentunya akan menjadi lebih, lebih baik daripada currency-currency lain. Jadi sebab itu kita lihat, bila kita lihat bilateral exchange rate antara ringgit dengan uh, sing, dengan ringgit dengan apa ni uh, Great Britain pound uh, ringgit dengan apa ni uh, 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 Japanese yen uh, memang kita pun uh, sedang mengalami pengukuhan yang sedikit sedikit eh, berbandingkan ke pengukuhan kita dengan USD. Dr Zakaria also explained that the ringgit strengthened to its highest level against the US dollar since August 2016, bolstered by higher oil prices as well as other commodity prices. As of yesterday, Brent crude was quoted at 68.07 US dollars per barrel, up 23 cents, the highest level since May 2015. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak has reiterated that the federal government's debt is not at a critical level, as claimed by certain quarters. Datuk Sri Najib, who is also the finance minister on his blog today, said that as of June last year, debt was recorded at 50.9% of the country's gross domestic product, GDP, which was lower than the 55% level set by the government. This, according to Datuk Sri Najib, proves that the government debt was still manageable and also lower at the 53.2% as of June 2016. The Prime Minister also denied allegations that the country was going bankrupt due to the federal government's debt, saying international bodies such as the World Bank had increased the growth projection for last year's GDP from 49 to 5.2%. He also said it did not make sense to say that Malaysia was going bankrupt when many countries had shown interest in investing in the country and were looking at forming trade partnerships. And that concludes this afternoon's edition of News on 2. In our top story, wanted robber killed in shootout with police in Cheras last night. We'll be back at 7 this evening. Till then, I'm Jessica Lee. Thanks for watching and have a pleasant day ahead.